1946 through 1948 Chrysler, New Yorker, Windsor, various models. And it's designed to be floppy. So that when you turn the handle to open a window, it's a window crank floppy. To take this apart, you have to do two basic things. First, there's a little pin right here, if you can see that, on the side. It's only on one side of the floppy. It is right, right there. Right there. See that? You waiting for a response from me? You have to push that pin through and into the plastic. But to do that, you need a sixteenth of an inch or 0 0.06 pin punch. I tried this, punching it through but the plastic apparently is too hard, maybe too old. It is 70 years old. And I broke the pin punch. Then I discovered what you can do is take a heat gun. And you put the heat gun about a quarter of an inch from the end, or the where it comes out, have a small orifice on the end of your gun, and aim it right here, about a quarter of an inch, but aim it towards the back of this floppy handle. And I put this in a vise where it's just held. Let's go to the vise and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. I have a vise that's got protection on it. So you want to protect the chrome and all that. Now put it in where it's, I clamp it at the bottom like that. Then I take the heat gun and I aim it back like this and about a quarter of an inch back from the plastic so I don't melt the plastic. <clears throat> now I don't have a pin punch, but what I'd use is the base of a 16th inch drill. I just broke it off. So you want to start the the, the uh, pin punch, or there's my homemade pin punch, base of a drill. And I put it right on where that pin is. And you want to tap it out. You want to be careful not to damage your piece. we got sound effects with the sirens. Just get it started. So it's got a little start where you can put the pin punch in there pretty easy. And what you do, as I said, you heat this up like this. Now what I found out is I hold it real close, aiming away from the plastic, and I do it for 30 seconds. Now what that does is soften up the plastic, and it doesn't hurt the chrome. And I found out by doing that, once you've done it for 30 seconds or so, you can give it a try. And I have done that. And at 30 seconds, it, this will go in maybe a, a eighth of an inch, three sixteenths. But it won't go, it doesn't seem to go all the way through. It may be if your plastic is a little softer. So I heat it again for 30 seconds more and try it again. And I just lightly tap. Like I said, I broke my pin punch because I tapped and tapped and tapped and the thing wouldn't go through. So you just tap and tap and tap and you'll feel it give once it goes through the plastic. So that's to get this plastic where it'll come out. So you can re-chrome the piece. Yes. That's what your goal is. But this, you do this after you take this back off of your handle. Because what you're wanting to do is this whole piece right here that's going through the end of the handle and into 
here there's a spring inside that holds this in. You want that whole thing to come through the hollow part of this floppy. It's all tied together. And it's held together by a spring washer behind this little covering of the post. There's a, it's almost like it's a washer, but it covers the post and holds in a spring washer. Now come over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> now what I used was a Dremel with a little a grinding bit. Uh, and I ground around the outside of this. Right around, the, just on the outside, being careful, trying not to get into the chrome. And I ate away at this little edge here. Got the, And once, it, once you start grinding all the way around, you'll see that spring washer underneath start to move around. That spring washer is this small, this little bitty washer, but it's a cup, a cup washer or spring washer. And that helps create tension where this will stay tight. So anyway, once you've dremeled that out, you may you have to be very careful because that spring washer will just pop out and you don't want to lose it. And mine did. First time I did it, went on the floor, but I was able to find it. So once that... And what I used was a little... Uh, dental pick I thought just put your finger, uh, thumb on it or something get that little dental pick and pick it up to where you can get that spring washer out easily without losing it once you do that you'll have this post that's sticking up it'll look like that so it goes from looking like this to looking like that once you've ground it out and the spring washer see just fits right in there around that but it, it may still be tight and you may have to ground down more so that this will come out it'll just come straight out that way this whole handle let me put this back in to show you how it goes together this whole handle floppy is like this and this is what moves and there's a little spring inside but once you dream it out, uh, dremel it out this whole thing will come out when you re push that pin into the plastic and here is the here it is there's the pin that was pushed in you can't get the pin out it's going to be there forever there's the pin when you reinstall it, you just turn it over because it's, it's symmetrical and you put it in the opposite way and you put a new pin in. The pin is about a half of an inch long, about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter, and you will tap it in. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I, I would probably recommend getting a clamp and clapping this good where it's nice and tight and looks good and drill into the plastic so that that pin will go in easy. So clamp it so that the Bakelite piece doesn't yeah, because work you don't, out as you're putting the pin in. You, I've had some of these where it's all, all crooked and it's sticking out more than it should. and So you want it to be in there and, and, and one side's got a gap and the other one doesn't. So you want to... Uh, Clamp it in place where it's nice and tight and looks good the way you want it. And then you're going to put that pin back in that hole and down into the plastic. Once again, it's only an inch and a half long. Once you've done that, then you take your floppy and you put that back in like this. And then you're going to have to put a washer and a screw through there. So you, um, 
you know, process before you do all that, you got to drill a hole straight down in the middle of this post. Now it looks like it's brass. And then <clears throat> once you've done the uh, screw a hole in there, now the uh, gentleman that uh, told me how to do all of this was on uh, Antique Automobile Association of America. An excellent, well-knowledged person. And he said, drill a 6-32nd inch, or drill a hole and tap it 6-32nd inch, so that you can put a screw in there. And he mentioned flaring this end. Of course, I don't, I don't know how to do that. And I, I don't. I'm thinking that once you put this, this washer right here, this washer in there. And then you put a thin flat washer on top of that with a narrow hole. And you put a screw in there that's going to hold everything together. This cup washer, as I said, creates tension so that this is just not flopping up and down. And so that's how you take away one of these floppy handles. These are very rare. You can't find them. And the only reason I was wanting to take one apart is that, as you can see, I got a number of them here, the ends. And here's an example of one that there's a little bit of a gap on one side, but not the other. Now, maybe someone wouldn't notice that, but it's noticeable to me. So you want to put it back in where it's nice and tight and no gaps and not, and not crooked. It's a nice clear piece too. So the reason, as I said, I was going to start doing all of this is because I want to get, take these to be re-chromed. You've got handles that have little scratches and and these are the uh, a different style. These are like for 59 on uh, after the 40, 46 through 48. 49 uh, and 50. Yeah. You know, and the, these are lightly pitted uh, it got scratches and nicks, and I want to get it re-chromed. This and the handle. And you have to take glass out, plastic out, any kind of washers, whatever that you're going to uh, send off to be re-chromed. You have to because separate all the parts, the pins and everything. They can only chrome the chrome. They can't right. chrome it together. Like piece. I had to take a mirror, complete three parts to the mirror, and then... Uh, and. Uh, uh, break the mirror to get back to the back part to take the cup of that mirror off so, so it was chromed in three parts and then you put it back together and then you take it to the glass um, place and they'll put a new mirror in for you well same thing here you've got to take all of this apart in order to take just two pieces to have it re-chromed but boy does it look nice when it comes back so that's how you take one of these floppy handles apart and put it all back together, make it look like new. Okay. I had said Dremel out the edge of this with a grinder, but what I'm going to do is put it in the vise and I'm going to use a drill and I've got 11, 11 64ths, whatever, anyway, a drill that not too big. You can see how the size of it. It looks pretty big. But it's not. It's less than the diameter of that ring washer. So, uh, to be specific, let me tell you the the size of it. It is eleven sixty four. And it's just I didn't have a any uh, like an eighth inch drill. Probably an eighth inch would work. But anyway, so you get, get this right here. The, the slow speed, start drilling out right in the center. Now this is a test, but I'm thinking this will work. And I'm thinking once it goes through and breaks through the center, you keep the drill against it because that will that little flared end to come loose from the from the post. Is it making progress? Yes. Take it back on the light. Yes.
we may need a bigger one. No, it's still going. And I've noticed that the uh, back side wants to turn, so you might want to use something to hold it so it won't turn. And we'll drill. Put a little bit more pressure. Okay, let's get a little <clears throat> I'll get a, a little piece of a, a, a dental tool We're going to come in here and see if that that will pop off but it won't. So we're going to drill a, bit, a little bit more. It may be we need a bigger drill bit, but it looks like it's making some progress. And I'm just kind of moving it back and forth a little bit to get around the edge. And see it started to turn again. So I want to get my needle nose pliers here just to stop that post from moving and drill Getting a little vibration, so it's probably going through. Okay, let me get a little bit bigger drill. And this is a 1564s. Now that's about the diameter of this cupped washer, so you don't want to to uh, damage the cup washer. So let me put this in the vise again. Hold the whole post so it don't turn, and we'll drill this. Okay, it looks like it's about to come, it's moving. See how, there you go, you see that? We have the cupped washer from the inside right here. That's what you don't want to lose. And then we drilled this out, which I'm Presuming can be thrown away. But all you what you have he's fell down. Here it is. I found it. It's finally it's right here. We're not gonna reuse it. I don't believe this can be reused. We'll put a washer on the end when we reinstall 
all of this. But here you have, you can see how it's drilled out and this post should come through the back side. A lot of times you, I've noticed on the other, the one I've done before, and I'll just try to push it through. There it is. See how it's coming through right here? Watch this. There it is. And that is what goes into the end of the floppy. And you just put it back in that way. We'll drill a little hole in here for a screw to hold it all together. But I think that uh, using the 15 64 inch drill bit on the end is much easier than trying to dremel it out and much, li much less likely to damage the cup washer. So that's how you take this out.